I would like now to introduce uh, uh, a bit the um, Nomad Artificial Intelligence Toolkit as a concept, as a, an actual implementation. So I forgot to introduce myself at the, at the beginning of, uh, of the uh, connection. Um, so I'm uh, Luca Giringelli from uh, uh, Fermat. Uh, and the normal laboratory, uh, and I'm co-organizing the, the the workshop uh, with uh, Luigi's by law, um, who will uh, um, uh, also lead the part of this uh, uh, in, uh, introduction um, in, a, in a in a second part. Actually, I have it here. Um, so we have heard the uh, talk by by Sergei Kalinin. Now I'm giving a short overview uh, and then uh, Luigi will go a little bit in detail uh, into a couple of uh, um, aspects uh, that we think are particularly interesting uh, about the, uh, the toolkit. And then I will talk uh, 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 briefly about the, uh, what happens tomorrow essentially. Uh, let me start uh, with the uh, slide or a representation that uh, I think, uh, so those of you that have already uh, participated to the former uh, uh, sessions of uh, former days of this uh, tutorial series uh, have already seen. So this is uh, a um, um, kind of a nice representation of the Nomad uh, Laboratory uh, as a, as a uh, infrastructure. Um, and uh, we have uh, several uh, kind of entities uh, and repository and archive were uh, covered by um, Marco Scheidgen in the, in the first uh, of these uh, uh, days. Um, and uh, we have also the encyclopedia that will be covered uh, later in June, I believe, or July by Lauri Manen. And today I'm focused on the artificial intelligence toolkit. Um, as a kind of a memo for the for the artificial intelligence toolkit, uh, we uh, well some people have reworked uh, uh, the the more or less famous FAIR acronym into uh, well the F stays as findable I suppose but the AI can be hacked and become artificial intelligence so AI already becomes artificial intelligence ready. Um, so why do we want to have things uh, artificial intelligence ready? Well, because I mean, uh, the moment you have an archive that is uh, uh, of, of um, in this case, material science data, uh, at the moment, mainly uh, computations, but uh, the experimental part is, uh, is growing. Uh, you want to do something with this data, right? Because the uh, kind of uh, level zero uh, usage of this archive is that you find things that you know they exist, like because you have done them, so you use the archive as a storage for the future self, uh, or a collaborator or somebody you know has done something, and then uh, in the paper there is a DOI uh, that, that you access the, the data, things that were covered by Marcus uh, uh, last time. Uh, so this is one somewhat simple usage. Of course, that doesn't mean that uh, achieving that is simple, by far not. Uh, but uh, uh, something a bit more complicated uh, could be what is covered by the encyclopedia, you will see. I mean, and the idea is really to have a sort of Wikipedia of materials, but I don't want to spoil anything. Um, another uh, uh, kind of approach is that one uh, does artificial intelligence analysis on the data. Uh, directly on the on the data that are stored in the archive, um, and you can do that, uh, um, let's say, on a web server. So you can use uh, our uh, uh, web service, as you will see, or as uh, Luigi will explain more in detail. You can also have a local version of the overall machinery and and do the analysis uh, in on a, on your uh, machine. So soon I will uh, go live. So this is still a slide, but I will go to the main portal of our artificial intelligence toolkit. Um, and um, 
but first uh, I want to lay down a little bit of uh, the general concept. So uh, feel free to interrupt me at any moment that means uh, uh, right in the chat that I can see while I don't see the, I probably should open another window. I don't see raised ends, but, but I guess Victoria can, uh, or team can, can uh, warn me if there is some raised ends, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, stop me at some point. <laughs> uh, so the uh, the toolkit uh, that is accessible via this uh, uh, web uh, address uh, is uh, um, an infrastructure uh, whose uh, that has serves uh, several purposes. Uh, one one purpose, and this is what uh, Luigi will explain uh, in detail because we think it is very important is that uh, one access directly uh, the, the Nomad archive via the, our metadata uh, structure that is called uh, MetaInfo and essentially via the API that allows the, this access and perform uh, some artificial intelligence analysis via libraries that are available to the, to the user. Um, so as I mentioned, we have this uh, web-based uh, access uh, what it is uh, made of, it is a, essentially a collection of uh, Python notebooks, in the sense that you have pre-made Python notebooks. Um, as I heard uh, somebody recently say about services, uh, the initial idea was to uh, uh, bypass the uh, horror vacui uh, or horror of uh, vacuum, that is, uh, uh, so when you, open a service and there is nothing there and everything is, is uh, interactive, but there is no example. So we have examples, but we go a little bit beyond just providing a couple of examples uh, that you can run. Uh, it is important to know that there is no uh, registration necessary, uh, but you can register. And when you register, you have access to storage and, and sharing of the, of the, well, storage at least sharing is uh, on, on its way. Um, of, of uh, notebooks that you create. Uh, more in detail, um, so we have this uh, Jupyter notebook uh, uh, based infrastructure uh, and we, so the, 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 the notebooks run in, in, in containers, in Docker containers, and we access uh, uh, say known uh, Python libraries for, for uh, in, in the environment. So this is provided directly in the, in the container. Um, and uh, when you choose to, to, to work uh, uh, via web, uh, the, the service is offered by uh, the Max Planck Computer and Data Facility um, and PCDF uh, uh, in, in Garting. Mm. So uh, a second, uh, I would say equal important uh, uh, reason uh, of the existence of the of the toolkit is to provide uh, tutorials, tutorials to uh, to learn uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, tools. We have already a, a, a rich uh, kind of uh, a set of uh, of uh, such tutorials, uh, and they are essentially what will be the object of your own uh, hands-on. And, and the, the list of these uh, tutorials is, uh, is growing. Uh, maybe we could have at uh, some point this uh, deep kernel learning <laughs> that we have just heard about. Um, and uh, specifically, most of the tutorial have material science uh, uh, applications. In few cases, we um, went to more traditional uh, examples because we think sometimes they are easier to understand, but most of the time you have uh, uh, specific material science uh, examples to learn uh, the artificial intelligence methods. The third and, and very, uh, uh, how to say, uh, looking into the future uh, uh, property of uh, or, or reason of the existence of the toolkit is uh, the fact that we uh, support and already provide examples of uh, notebooks uh, where the uh, full artificial intelligence workflow of some publication is uh, reproduced. Uh, so the users can go to these uh, notebooks and, uh, 
and uh, redo essentially what was done uh, in uh, for some uh, publication, um, starting from the the raw data and uh, and uh, and going up to the to the final result. Uh, with the aim, most of the time we try to have. Uh, to reproduce some of the plots or tables that are in the publication. So we, we think that this is uh, very good for learning uh, um, artificial intelligence tools, uh, but also brings uh, reproducibility in science to the next, uh, uh, I would say, very welcome level. On, on one side, we would like to access always the data that, that people have been using and grow and, and slowly this thing is, is being achieved uh, by means of uh, uh, infrastructure like uh, Nomad, but uh, many others that are existing around the world. But if you perform some data analysis, you may be want to have also this procedure uh, completely um, um, stored and, 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 uh, and users and, and readers of, of the papers and users can go and, and reproduce it. Um, I want to, before I, I jump to the uh, uh, semi live uh, uh, demonstration, uh, meaning it is live on the web server, but I've preloaded everything. Uh, I wanted to, to first have a, a small digression on the, um, um, yeah, taxonomy a bit of artificial intelligence because you, you will see uh, many methods in this, uh, in this uh, course uh, today and tomorrow. And I want to offer uh, a kind of a mind map of, uh, of these uh, methods. So first of all, artificial intelligence is, is a, a very big container. Um, um, you could find uh, uh, still uh, a little of bit of confusion in, uh, in uh, among the non-expert. Let's put it in this way. Um, machine learning has become used everywhere and it is being used and, and more and more in material science. So it's still possible that you submit a paper uh, in material science and uh, referees uh, disagree that what you have done is artificial intelligence because they have a somewhat narrow or strange vision of what machine, uh, artificial intelligence is. So artificial intelligence is very, very general uh, discipline that uh, uh, develops algorithms uh, mimicking human intelligence in a very wide sense. So, and this is not necessarily learning. Uh, it could be really something that is a, a set of if-then rules. Artificial intelligence started as a so-called if-then rules. So one tries to uh, tell the machine everything, every bifurcation, what should happen, especially in, in robotics. Um, you have machine learning that is a part of uh, artificial intelligence. You have data mining. Uh, people put compressed sensing, uh, I will talk about uh, that probably later, uh, but you will learn what, what this is uh, uh, during this, this workshop. Um, and, and so this is a, a big container and uh, uh, before I continue with the classification, I, I put a warning. So I introduced my friend, the platypus. Um, uh, so one shouldn't explain jokes, but the joke here is that uh, uh, this little guy uh, is a bit of a nightmare for taxonomies, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a mammal, but it has a few features that are not too uh, mammal-like. So whenever you want to do a, a, a zoological taxonomy, uh, the platypus is uh, the example that uh, at least philosophers use to say, don't uh, stick too much to your taxonomy. Um, anyway, so a first uh, kind of uh, uh, distinction that one can do in, uh, in artificial intelligence that is seldom done is that you have two big uh, classes. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> as people who say that the, the plot is not on scale, meaning that uh, I would say most of the effort are in the so-called confirmatory analysis. And I'm, I'm now going to explain what this is. And, uh, but this exists also something very interesting that is called exploratory analysis. So the confirmatory analysis is what you would normally think as, a, as artificial intelligence, especially if you go toward machine learning. So that you have some object function, some quantity that you want to the, the, the algorithm to learn. Um, and, and, 
and therefore uh, you you have data for which you know this property and you try to train a machine that that uh, uh, reproduce uh, the, the training data and makes a prediction on data that are unseen. So the two big classes in confirmatory analysis are regression and classification. Um, regression is when you want to learn a, a kind of continuous property classification when you want to learn a, a discrete set of values of a quantity, so classes. Um, the exploratory analysis is a little bit of the um, um, yeah, less uh, wanted the uh, uh, child of, of artificial intelligence. Um, um, and it is about, it uses method uh, such as clustering, dimensional reduction, um, uh, subgroup discovery, outlier detection, I should have put, um, that uh, do not use any uh, training label in the data. So they just look at the structure of the data. And we have a couple of tutorials on that, made by Luigi, by, by the way, um, that will, uh, uh, teach you uh, the basics of this uh, fascinating uh, part of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so now I removed that classification because machine learning could be both exploratory and confirmatory analysis. Um, oh, by the way, the, the, I, I particularly like the choice of these two, two names. Uh, it is of course mine. Uh, because it has a little bit of a, a moral uh, judgment uh, in the sense that exploratory is really open, you know, something where you, when you learn things, confirmatory is like, well, boring. I knew these things already. I just confirmed that I knew them. Um, that's not strictly the case always, but I, I like the, the attitude of these two names, to be honest. Uh, so a, a subclass of artificial intelligence is machine learning. Machine learning is now really uh, the, the learning uh, uh, part of, uh, of, of this artificial intelligence, where strictly speaking, uh, something to be called a machine learning algorithm, it has to improve uh, the model, the more data are given. This trickery is, 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 is achieved by what uh, is called in, in statistics and mathematics in general, regularized regression. So, uh, there are devices in, in machine learning algorithm that um, uh, uh, make sure or try hard that the more data you give, the more the model is, uh, is, is correct. Uh, an interesting subclass of, uh, of machine learning um, that um, let's say also, there's a kind of classification that I see done rarely, um, but, but uh, I think it is important is uh, representation learning. So this is a subclass because here there is something that it is machine learning, but it doesn't learn representation. So what does that mean? Uh, so um, think about what uh, Sergei has, has just presented. If you have a, a Gaussian process, um, the representation of the Gaussian process, so the input that you give to the Gaussian process, it is also the representation that is used. Um, uh, it, it is some descriptor that you give to the machine and the machine lives in that, with that descriptor. So it cannot do very much. If you have chosen a bad descriptor, uh, you will suffer uh, consequences. Um, representation learning tends to be a bit more flexible. So even if you start from uh, an input that is not optimal, part of the machine learning uh, algorithm is to learn a better representation of the data that is eventually used to make the predictions. It sounds a bit abstract, you know, uh, still uh, this is where uh, things are going in, in, my, in my view. Not, not to bash uh, Gaussian processes, as you see, they are combined <laughs> with, the, with the representation learning when you do the deep kernel learning. Um, but uh, uh, it seems that the most of the effort in development of methods uh, these days is about in, in representation learning. And let's say, again, uh, the plot is not on scale. <laughs> Deep learning uh, is taking most of the, the representation learning uh, uh, spotlights, but we have also symbolic inference. When we try to learn uh, an input representation and then a very, very simple model compared to what you could achieve by deep learning, um, and, and you learn it together with the, uh, with the model itself. 
And okay, and then we have uh, deep learning uh, as a as a kind of uh, again big big container because uh, uh, there are many facets uh, in, uh, in deep learning. Um, okay, so this was uh, more or less uh, my. Um, um, uh, yeah, mind map uh, before uh, we go to our uh, uh, web page. So now, not this one, I want to show this one. Um, okay, so this is the uh, central portal of um, uh, the, uh, the artificial intelligence toolkit. Um, okay, uh, actually, are there questions so far? Don't see anything, but I still see 97 people connected. So, okay, <laughs> let me proceed. Um, uh, so this is our main portal. Uh, the URL you, you see here, uh, Nomad Lab AI Toolkit. Actually, probably uh, you might be familiar with the general uh, uh, portal uh, that was shown also by Markus Schagen. Uh, and you get uh, to the toolkit uh, via this uh, button here. I just go back to the prefer. Um, and uh, the thing that you see uh, is the, 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 fear, the four uh, big buttons here. Plus, if you scroll down a little bit of introduction with some uh, videos, uh, uh, some cartoon, and, 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 and some more technical video uh, introducing the, the thing, uh, pointers to publication uh, and so on. Um, so what are these uh, four buttons? So to, to you, you could recognize the, the three of the things that I have uh, uh, shown in the, in the previous, uh, uh, in, with the slides. So we have uh, something to query the archive. Uh, something about uh, tutorials for artificial intelligence and something about uh, reproducing uh, uh, results from, uh, from existing publication plus one kind of get to work uh, uh, button for let's say experienced user that puts you into, 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 some, uh, into your workspace. I will come to this in a, in a, in a, second, in a few seconds. Okay, um, I had pre-opened the things, uh, uh, yes. Um, okay, so to be clear, uh, query the archive again will be uh, object of uh, Luigi's uh, um, part of the tutorial. So I skip it for the moment. Um, and then we have uh, uh, this, um, um, so if you click uh, new tutorials, you will land on a page like this. But before that, um, I, suggest that, so if you plan, especially today, I see a question, I'm coming, one second. Um, um, if you plan today to, um, to actually look into the, into the uh, notebooks, uh, but certainly you need this uh, for tomorrow, uh, I suggest you that you uh, log in, meaning that you uh, register. So if, if you click this, uh, this get to work here, uh, I have another thing open because I need the, the incognito window. Um, so if you are not yet logged in and you click get to work, you're presented with a, a mask for logging in. And if you don't have uh, a, a, an account, you just click register and you would have something to fill in and, and, you, and you could uh, be registered. So everything you can do uh, without registration. So, um, if you click uh, things here, you will land uh, into a page. Uh, so here you see the time logged in. So uh, I'm welcome. Uh, if you do it without being logged in, uh, um, you you will um, um, you will not have this 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 welcome. So the, the only difference between the two cases is that you will see uh, eventually you reach notebooks if you um, um, you are logged in. Uh, you will have uh, uh, your own workspace and you can make modification and, and so on. If you 
uh, are not logged in, uh, you can still do local modification, uh, but you cannot save what you what you're doing. Um, okay, before I continue here, let, let me go to the couple of questions. I see that the presentation learning arise some uh, question marks. So again, uh, really is representation learning in a sense a combination of exploratory and confirmatory analysis? So that's a very good question. Um, probably yes. In, in, in the sense that the so exploratory analysis can definitely be supervised. Um, and, and yes, so the uh, a possibility could be that the, the uh, initial input, the, the descriptor is dimensionally reduced and that could be really, could be seen as a, as a, as a, as a way to do a kind of exploratory learning. I think that um, um, the focus is really on how you use what, what, what you get out of this, uh, of this analysis. Uh, the, the, the focus on exploratory is really that you get something and you look at it and, and then you decide how to proceed. Uh, so uh, if, if I'm very open to say that the representation learning part is, is some kind of unsupervised learning in the sense that it's some kind of uh, uh, input manipulation. Uh, I, I'm not so 100% sure that I would strictly call it exploratory unless you inspect, and this goes back to my question to Sergey, uh, the internal representation in, during your super, uh, representation learning and you think what that means. And then probably you uh, change something in your input or, or, or in the data that you are providing in order to uh, have a further uh, um, yeah, understanding. So to me, exploratory learning is something that really needs the human to, 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 to think and, 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 and rethink, uh, while the um, confirmatory analysis is something that you get a number, you get a prediction, and essentially that's it. Of course, you want to maybe know why the prediction is there, but it's this is the big difference. Uh, then uh, I have thanks. Uh, representation. So for Maskin, representation learning is the case where the model learns the feature vector automatically rather than handmade descriptors. Yeah, I mean you can summarize in this way. I would say so. Yes. Uh, the typical case is in the deep, deep learning in which uh, uh, the uh, input of the of the network. Uh, changes or you could see each layer of the network has uh, disconnected and, and it, it receives the, the, the input from the previous layer. Uh, so after a few layers, the, 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 the input to the next layer doesn't look like what you have in input. Some things, some part of the input are not used at all and some are amplified in a certain way. So uh, this is what the network does. And, and you can always uh, uh, look into any layer and, and, and this is your internal representation and, and, and think what happens. Uh, okay. Uh, let me go back to uh, this overview. Um, so we have uh, this, uh, this page here uh, in which we, um, uh, we uh, have a, a list of uh, um, uh, tutorials. And, and here you find uh, most, so all the tutorials that I have uh, uh, selected for, for tomorrow's uh, hands-on uh, session. And, and, and uh, this, this menu is hopefully is self-explanatory. Uh, you have uh, these uh, uh, collapsible uh, uh, tabs in, in which you uh, get a short explanation of what you can find, some, uh, some keywords. All the keywords can be searched in these uh, boxes here. The authors of the uh, notebook can be can be searched the moment you want to follow, especially somebody, um, and uh, and then you can access the tutorial specifically with this button. And if it exists, we have a video uh, that that makes a short introduction to the to the tutorial itself and all the methodology in the tutorial. Uh, so you have a list of things so suggested is you have a beginner level, intermediate level, so methods that are a little bit more uh, complex. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, before I come to the tutorial themselves, uh, so I will show one example because I want to show a couple of features. Uh, let me also show, um, so 
the, the moment you are uh, in this page, you click here, view tutorials, you land in this page. Uh, you have beginner, you have intermediate level, uh, but uh, some of the say beta tester told us, yeah, okay, but this is still uh, some kind of unstructured list. What if I know nothing? Again, John Snow <laughs> looking at us. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I want to have a, a path uh, through, through methods. So not for today, but again, from the, from the homepage, uh, uh, you, you scroll a little bit down, uh, we, we have added a kind of a virtual course in, uh, in artificial intelligence. So if you click there, you land here. And you have uh, now really, so the, 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 the aspect of the menu is, is similar, but it is really intended as a, as a, as a list. Uh, and, and you have an introductory lecture uh, by myself. <laughs> And, uh, and then uh, you have uh, uh, other lectures uh, with a companion notebook. So the introductory one doesn't have a specific uh, notebook, but all of the other one have a, have a notebook. So you, you, you can follow a lecture and, uh, and, and this, these are extended uh, university lectures. So they are kind of uh, uh, one and a half, uh, so it's two chunks of 45 minutes more or less. Uh, and then you access notebooks where, when you can Put your hands on the methods. Uh, some of these notebooks will be object of the workshop, uh, but uh, so just just for you to know that you can then have your own course. For the moment, we don't have credits <laughs> to give, but uh, uh, yeah, we can talk about. Um, okay, the next thing. Where am I? So back to the learn uh, uh, from tutorials. Uh, I think this one is, uh, yeah, okay, sorry for this. I wanted to show back this one. So if you click uh, reproduce results, you open another of these uh, menus, uh, very similarly looking, but now every of this notebook is related to a paper uh, that has been published. Um, uh, I've not specifically selected any of this for tomorrow's uh, Anson part. Uh, I will show one uh, application later today after Luigi's uh, um, part. Um, before I close this, this uh, um, overview, let me just have another look at the chart. No, nothing. Um, I want to go to one specific uh, uh, notebook um, because it shows a little bit that something you, you can find in, 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 in some of these notebooks. So uh, this uh, discovery of new topological insulator in alloyed tetrodomites. Don't bother at the moment about topological insulator and tetrodomites if you know nothing about this. Um, uh, but so this uh, uh, is related to uh, publication of uh, 2020 or 21, I forgot exactly. And here would be uh, the notebook. So this is the first time I'm showing uh, the general uh, layout of the notebooks is very similar. We try to, to have them a little bit uh, similar in, in, uh, in, in aspect. Um, so it looks like this. Uh, the, Overall uh, notebook, as usual, a notebook is uh, some, uh, 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 well, this is actually not a very long one, but uh, it's as usual a kind of longish document that uh, uh, you can read carefully. Uh, you have a general introduction, and then, uh, okay, this particular one has a possibility to open and close the uh, sort of. Python cells. So this has pre, been pre-run and then you have code to um, initialize and then uh, upload data. So this data specifically have been taken from the Nomad archive. So these strange compounds exist in the Nomad archive in some form. Uh, I don't go into details because Luigi will show how this is actually done for a different example. Um, what I want to show is one uh, um, feature of, uh, of the Nomad Toolkit that uh, we like to uh, kind of uh, advertise. 
especially if people want to contribute and make other notebooks. Uh, so uh, specifically Luigi has developed uh, this uh, visualizer. So that's the official name. Um, and, and this visualizer is, is a, a tool for uh, having interactive plots that are the result of our uh, machine learning uh, things. So this specific example is uh, an example with symbolic regression where we want to learn if these compounds are or not uh, topological insulator. Eventually, after all the crunching, uh, the, the, the machine uh, uh, finds uh, a representation that is, uh, could be put in two dimension, especially because we explicitly asked for a two dimensional representation. Um, and uh, this, this cloud of points here are all the material that are uh, predicted to be um, uh, trivial insulators. And, and, and this other cloud here is the uh, materials that are predicted to be topological insulators. Um, if you have a question about the method, it, 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 you, you will have all the answers uh, well, later and, and, and tomorrow, because we have one of the tutorials on, on this particular method. Um, and this map is interactive in the sense that uh, if, you, if you click uh, any, any uh, data points, uh, you have a, a J, J a small uh, representation of, uh, of them so that you could uh, look into them and, and see what they are. So this is all done through the, the, the Nomad archive in the sense that this uh, data exists as, uh, as calculations. And, and then uh, the, the, the API is uh, making access, accessing information on, on, on these uh, data points, but also their, their structure. Um, so, and, and then you have handles on the, on the quality of the plot. Uh, a bit slow, but uh, you, you, you could uh, change uh, the, the, the aspect of the figure because eventually you could uh, um, uh, export it. In a, in, a, in a format that is ready for a publication or for a, for a slide. So in the next uh, uh, tab, I have, uh, so keep in mind this plot, this is the same plot in the publication. Honestly, I like a bit more this one. Uh, so, but we essentially, okay, finally my <laughs> the thing reacted here. So, uh, and, uh, and this is exactly what we had in the publication. Uh, um, I essentially can stop uh, here. No, I want to show another thing. When you are in this uh, 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 notebooks, um, do you, or no, better better than if we go from uh, uh, from this get to work, and we have actually uh, accessed. Um, what you are presented with is your, uh, oh no, sorry, I'm not logged in here. Sorry, one second, mistake. Okay, so forget about. So when you enter get to work, I'm still not logged in. Let me try again from the main window. Okay, now I am in. Good. So what you are presented with is this uh, uh, folder structure. Uh, all the tutorials are in this tutorial uh, folder here. You could start them directly from uh, from this thing. This is a typical Jupyter Hub uh, uh, kind of environment. Uh, the new thing is that you have this work directory. So this few uh, um, notebooks are, were created by me in the, in the past months. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah, I, I always find them the moment I enter with my credentials. Um, so this you will find particularly, yeah. So question is if, uh, ah, no, 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 no. If we must be registered to have access to notebooks, not. Uh, you would, uh, so the, if you 
access via the, 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 the homepage here to view tutorials or reproduce results or query the archive, anything, you access them without uh, registration. Uh, my suggestion is that you register because you get your own workspace uh, and, and you can uh, um, uh, say uh, any modification that you do to the, to the notebook. Um, I think I shown everything I wanted. Uh, Luigi, do you think I should say anything that you do not cover later? Uh, I, um, I think it was, yeah, everything was you did, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you will, you will, will, topic, so, yes. yeah, you will repeat a little bit the visualizer thing, I know, but uh, I, I prefer to have it already kind of uh, yeah. you. Uh, no, but okay, yeah, so the, because I, I, I like uh, the, the, the idea and the execution. Um, anyway, so Luigi appeared. <laughs> I, uh, Welcome, Luigi. Thanks. And then, um, uh, I, I stop here for, for on, on, on my side, so I would leave uh, a few uh, minutes uh, for for more. Uh, sure, uh, I am. Um, yeah. One second, I uh, I see a question. Actually, another one appeared. Uh, first, uh, from uh, Jose Pizarro. What do you uh, recommend to start playing with the AI toolkit, the Intro to ML, or the Learn from Tutorials website? Um, so. It depends. So if you think you are quite new to, to, to machine learning, uh, uh, I would suggest to go to this uh, virtual course because you would have uh, an introduction and, and, and step by step and you will be, it, it goes a little bit by uh, increasing complexity. Um, if you have already some ideas, uh, uh, probably the, the, the best is go, goes to this uh, list of uh, tools, uh, toolkit, I'm sorry, Notebooks uh, that that, uh, that that we have, so that you identify the one that you think you want to uh, learn. Uh, each uh, notebook in this tutorial uh, notebook series is meant to be self-explanatory. So it it tries to start from from very simple concepts and and then build uh, uh, to, towards more complex. So um, sometimes we have the video. So it also depends if you prefer to have a, a video uh, to follow or, or directly uh, and a hands-on. Uh, but, but yeah, I, I think if you already know something about machine learning, that the best is to, is to go uh, into, into the, the tutorials uh, and, and then follow them because they explain new specific aspects. Um, then the next question is from uh, Johanna Medina. Uh, the new definition of fair is spendable and I am ready. <laughs> But what is the term for the, for the data to be already? Well, I'm not so sure this is the new definition, is uh, our proposed definition or also from, or from somebody else. Uh, okay, so there is, um, uh, to, to answer uh, actually the question, um, let, 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 let me frame it in this way. Um, what, what you need to have some something uh, uh, artificial intelligence ready is first of all, that you can, Query this this data and, and and gather the data in a in a friendly way, right? If you have ever done any any machine learning uh, and uh, the data say came from literature uh, or or some database, typically so you have to learn the API if you are going to that database. You have to yeah go through uh, uh, tables and and anything that is not digital to to. Uh, uh, gather the data for doing your machine learning. Uh, so this is quite uh, uh, cumbersome. And, and so one uh, kind of desire requisite to, to, to be AI ready is that you, you have a common API to access the data. Common meaning, so you access all the data with the same API. Uh, and then you have uh, tools to uh, operate with them even before you start uh, uh, the, the machine learning. Right, so all uh, yeah, cleaning up of, of, of the data, looking for outliers that it means uh, itself could be some, some artificial intelligence tools and so on. Um, so th th this is what you would need to, to, to do. This is, these are all operations that you do every time you do any, any artificial intelligence uh, kind of project. Uh, the idea is that the, the artificial intelligence toolkit is providing you the tools to do that in the same uh, framework. 
this is the, the, the goal, uh, I would say, partially achieved. It's not that, that uh, we can promise that all the data are uh, artificial intelligence ready. There is uh, a, another aspect that is now going a bit more into the um, uh, meaning of the data, um, uh, is that you have data from uh, different sources, so they could have a different level of uh, uh, accuracy. So what machine learning in general might not be very uh, uh, apt to do without special tools is to combine uh, data from different sources uh, that have possibly different uh, intrinsic biases. So is, if, if there is noise, that, that's okay, machine learning. But if you have a subset of data that are shifted or, or somewhat uh, uh, Worked in some way, and, and other set of data, uh, uh, subset of data has a different uh, bias that could, could become tricky. So uh, you, you can easily operate uh, with data that are uh, consistent. So they 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 have uh, say same methodology to the way they are uh, produced. If the, the methodology is heterogeneous, uh, that is uh, uh, an issue. And, and part of the goal of Fermat is to provide tools also to uh, homogenize the data in this sense. But in this, we are at the very beginning, uh, and not only us, uh, the, the field is, is, is really starting. To have this in a semi-automatic way is a big challenge. Of course, you can do it by yourself. You can learn the data and, and, and try to, to, to clean them in some way. But uh, also this, this uh, further homogenization, I would call it, is part of making the uh, data AI ready. So we are not that yet. Uh, we are not that there yet. <laughs> okay, back to Luigi if there is no, yeah.